Hmm. Well, this is a matter that uh, is going to be on for a while. Hmm. But speaking about whether or not this matter is difficult to resolve, let's look at that with respect to the Southern Governors Forum. Hmm. Uh, they met after several years. Uh, they, in their communique, are speaking about uh, devolution of power, uh, true federalism, of course, one indivisible Nigeria. Is it difficult to resolve or to say, uh, get everyone to agree on true federalism or devolution of powers? Uh, thank you. Uh, this, is, um, this is the happier side of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how so? <laughs> no, it is so because um, we hear always that Northern governors are made in. We hear always that the Northern governors have met with Arewa Consultative Forum, Northern Elders Forum. I dare say that the frequency of this meetings has created the impression that they know what they are doing over there. Here... That's with respect to politics. With respect to governance. Governance. Yeah. Because, you see, governance comes from policy formulation, discussions, and implementation. You don't just jump up and throw out a policy statement mm -hmm. without deliberations. But back here in the South, the kind of politics our governors have played has been one of total embarrassment, where they take partisan political positions into governance. And therefore, what the result was was obvious, a disconnect between the governors and the people. If you ask me, Ask all the 17 governors or their representatives who were present there yesterday how many of them traveled to Lagos by road to really know about the state of this so called Enugu Potakot Highway or Biniore Ijebude Road. How many of them came by road? Hmm. But how does this singular meeting point to? either a willingness to correct all this? No, it's not. It, you won't take it as a wholesale willingness. But right. it, is, it is beginning to lead towards a convergence. Mm -hmm. It is beginning to create the impression of a consonance rather than dissonance. Mm -hmm. Here they do. All of them, it was like, to your tents, we have won elections. Every governor was fortifying his... Uh, his territory, and I mean, this is even if you take it at the zonal level, it is not only until recently that the governors, I mean, re as recently as two, three years ago, perhaps, that the governors of the Southwest started to come together on the basis of economic integration for the region. Mm. Politics had torn all of them apart. But uh, you heard the communique. Uh, that was read by the, uh, the Secretary of the Akim Miyambodi, the Governor of Lagos State. Do you see anything new in their approach to what they want to achieve? I, I see a lot of things new in their approach. First, they are collectively giving voice to the need for devolution of powers and to all other issues of restructuring that has become the issue of the day. That didn't pass when the senators and the House of Reps members... That's what I'm saying. The only thing missing from yesterday's meeting is a mention of how the governors were going to work with their various legislative houses to ensure, and I think it was mentioned, to ensure that when the amendments to the Constitution finally arrives in the State Houses of Assembly that will work in concert to ensure that the interest of the South is protected in the various amendments that will be provided. But the important thing to note here is that I, I do want to commend Governor Ambode. I mean, Lagos State is actually the state to beat. Lagos State is, is not just the fourth or fifth big, largest economy in Africa. It, it, it shows in the way 
things happen here. First, you recall that the first Southern governor's meeting held under Asiwaju Bola Tunubu, and the next one held sometime in 2015 or thereabout, I'm not too sure, but this is the third meeting that has held. There is the need for more interfacing. Hunger is common to every, all the states. There is no PDP hunger, APC hunger, or Abga hunger. Hunger is hunger. But, you know, if we, if we look at uh, what, uh, what they want to achieve, uh, the southern governors, and then you put it side by side, the dawn agenda, the development agenda of uh, Western um, Nigeria, I think that that's the dawn agenda. Yeah. It's, don't you think it's just a replication of what dawn is and making it a, a bigger picture to take the whole of the southern part of uh, the country? But what has dawn achieved itself? Well you may not begin to look and count the achievements right now but the fact that there is a dawn agenda it means that they will be discussing that they will be exploiting and that over time the benefits might begin to show and i think that it is the same thing for, for the south south is actually a tragedy that our governors not only their political differences, personal political differences, are in the public domain. Mm. One governor won't talk to the other governor on account of some very flimsy and untenable kinds of stories. Is that hap what happened? That because one of the governors was not there. Well, I, I, I actually hoped that he would come, the governor of Cross River. I had hoped that he would come, but he has a way of doing his own thing. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, maybe the next meeting, all of them will be present, not just represented by their deputies. I mean, one can excuse the governor of Anambra State. Um, people are hot on his heels trying to take his position, and therefore, if he moved out of the state yesterday, nobody knows what, <laughs> what kinds of crossovers you will see. But in all seriousness, this is a positive development for southern Nigeria. Mm. But what about, does it have, doesn't it have a tendency of making it look like us and them? No, it could never. If me and you and a group of people who live in a small community sit down together to discuss our problems and how to resolve them, 